I'm Mike Pettengill. Welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience, and we learn about the craft of storyboarding along the way. This is an improv art stream that runs on audience suggestions. Mike, what kind of prompts are you looking for from the audience? Well, it's back to our standard three, right? We're looking for characters, setting, and conflict. Those are the three things that we need to do the basics of any story. Great. So if you're watching the stream, feel free to jump in with your suggestions. Whatever you might feel like suggesting might show up on the screen today. Yeah. And you know what? We've had some pretty wild stuff in the past. So let us have it. Let's hear what you got. But, you know, try not to make it like a million characters in the soccer stadium kind of thing, because that just takes a long time to draw. <laughs> we only have 90 minutes. <laughs> You know, I, I think, Mike, you might be able to speak to that sort of thing, being a, a oh. background designer yourself, right? So I'm going to yeah, turn the tables a little bit. Generally, you would ask the questions, but I'm going to ask you some questions because we've worked together for, what, like eight, nine years? I think, well, however long you were on The Simpsons because I'm still there, so. Yeah, so it was almost, almost nine years. Wow. So, you know, like we were just talking before the stream about doing backgrounds and doing environments and such like that. And uh, I can't say that's my strongest suit, um, but, you know, I've seen your work and it's amazing. And so, uh, you know, when, when you get that handout of, of like complicated background things, like yeah. where do you start? Uh, for us, it's, uh, well, at least in the role that I'm in as a background layout person, I'll get a scene that a character layout guy like yourself has already handled. And so you'll have your, terribly useless drawing behind the people <laughs> and i will try just teasing you i'll try to convert that into something other than just a horizon line you know right, well, you're maybe, not wrong maybe, yeah maybe make a room but that you know acting this is something i talk about character layout people to novices who don't know how to draw and i try to explain you know i say imagine taking just the lines it takes to write your name do a drawing of homer so people look at it and instantly know it's homer but he's mad and he's hiding it. <laughs> yeah. And then they go, because okay. <clears throat> they start to understand the problems that you guys deal with on a daily basis. And then do it like this, where he's like looking the other way and just kind of looking over his shoulder. But he's mad, but he's hiding it. And I go, I'll draw the couch all day. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So much yeah. Easier. I mean, subtext is a thing, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and I find that's what a lot of times will differentiate, you know, a good artist from a great artist, right? Because oh, yeah. um, it's it's like the old uh, Ollie Johnston and um, and Frank Thomas thing, right? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Mm -hmm. What's what's going through a character's head right now? And and is it apparent on the screen? That's it. Like the art, the ability that you character layout artists have to, um, you know hear what's going on in the audio, look at it in the context of the story and the sequence you're working with and present it as a performance by drawing it. It's just phenomenal to me. It's just, just yeah. amazing. It's wizardry. And uh, you know, sh you need a place. I'm like the DP, right? You need a place. You need the camera to be pointing at the people, right? And you need the, mm -hmm. the world behind them to make sense and not a plant sticking out of their head when they're being really emotional or whatever, you know? Right. That's that's the stuff that background layout takes care of. We take care of props and stuff like that. But you guys, you have so much going on. You shouldn't even have to draw anything behind them. You know, really, you shouldn't. Yeah, for the uninitiated, uh, uh, DP stands for director of photography. Oh yeah, yeah. Like in like in live, I always liken that to live action because people understand that. Right. And the the cameraman working with the directors often we'll just set up the shop for them. And that's a lot of what we do in background layout. Cause we'll yeah. adjust how the camera, we'll adjust how the camera's pointed a little bit based on the sequence, you know, the scenes that follow and what you say, you want to hide something. So suddenly it's revealed that someone's there, you know, that's all handled by camera positioning and everything. And we just work around what you guys have done as far as performances and make the visual flow of the overall thing work. Yeah. I think that's that's really important, you know. And and for those of you who are like character layout, what the heck is that? Well, it was a job that um, we used to do. Uh, well, and The Simpsons still does. I think we still do it. We're the last, as far as I know, we're the last guys except for features, you know. Yeah. 
Um, so what you do with, with the initial like rough storyboard, you would come in and, and uh, basically do a first pass of the animation performance um, on model and with the acting in, in place, but not fully, uh, not fully articulated like the animation would be. So some people approach it like animation keyframe drawings or like it's kind of that. Yeah, a lot of that. And you get some people that are like, well, this is the position that this is the exact position the character is supposed to be in. And then this is uh, kind of the acting that goes along with it. And so there's like two sort of schools of approach on that, I think. Because mm -hmm. I, I know that some some directors on The Simpsons were like, that's not character layout. That's like you're doing animation drawings. And then the other ones were like, yeah, these are great. These are like, you know, this is great character layout because they're like animation drawings. So there was true, yeah. Of and it, it depends on how they what they want, and then it also depends on the timer they work with too. Because I've seen timers just throw reams of drawings on the floor. You know, just yeah. we don't need these. We don't need these. We don't need these. You know, so it really depends on on the whole chain and you know who the director is working with and how much control to give them. And yeah, yeah. I always thought more was better, but I guess some people have different views about that. Um, yeah, it's true. I mean, and it, it really depends on the director you're working with and how well you know them, uh, you know, a lot of the time, uh, what they're going to want from you um, when you're working in character layout. I think, though, now in, in a lot of ways, that character layout process has kind of been shunted into boards. You yeah, know, it has. Yeah. So so one of the one of the great things about digital is is it does save a lot of time. Um, you know, I, I actually had an experience where I realized just how much Storyboard Pro saved me uh, mm -hmm. time because uh, I did a project that was I used a Bitmap program and, and like a, a, a nonlinear editor to make an animatic. And it took me like four times as long. Oh, <laughs> I was really? Like, wow. I to go back and then edit the thing and different programs and imports and exports and stuff like that. Instead of just drawing it straight in the program like I should have in the first place, I was trying to use like prepackaged programs that came with a you know, a Wacom tablet um, to, to do the thing, just to show that um, it can be done. And yes, it can be done for sure. But uh, yeah. with, with you can do it with a burnt, a burnt stick in a cave wall if you had enough time. I mean, it's just a matter of how stream, streamlined your tools need to be. We have a suggestion from Charlie Brown. He says, uh, a man right. wins the lottery and tries to escape the country to avoid getting robbed. Ooh. I like this concept. I, I do too because uh, you know there's thieves out there. I mean, I heard a story of one guy who only keeps like a gallon of gas in his car just because of thieves in his neighborhood. Right, and so. Julie ninety, she has a happy uh, happy morning and suggests a group of children discover a dead body. Oh, a group of children discover a dead body of a guy who was trying to flee the country because he won the lottery and he got he stuck. He still has a ticket on him. Yes. Oh, I like it's, this intrigue. They're trying to decide whether to report it or just take the ticket and run. Hmm. Okay. How old are these? How old are these children? They have to know enough to know that a lottery ticket's valuable. I'm. I'm thinking probably like tween. You know. Okay. So I, like I don't that. know. Should Should he be alive still? And now they have this quandary of like what to do about the whole like thing. Like he's he's breathing, but he's not. He's not quite dead. I don't want to go on the cart. <laughs> not quite dead. I'm not quite dead. I'm happy. Come back, yeah. come back in an hour. He'll be dead. You know, I, I wonder how, how much longer Monty Python stuff's going to carry with uh, with current generations. I know. We haven't been doing our job of indoctrinating the young well enough. Yeah. It's it's just such silly comedy, and I love silly comedy. All right. So yeah. let's see. Um, I think we should start with... Uh, the guy fleeing into the woods. Uh, and I don't know why you would flee into the woods in, until you got your, your ticket or something, but you know, why don't, why don't we do this? I, I like combining both of those ideas, but let's say that he, uh, either he could be on his way to go cash the ticket or he could already have cashed the ticket and just have fat stacks of cash. Ooh. I'm kind I like of the, I like the duffel bag idea. I'm 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 kind of thinking that like maybe he's uh all right, so let's 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 start into this. And Charlie Brown's down with that. Uh, he says, yeah, let's let's start with the fleeing guy. After he yeah. ticket, yeah. 
I, I, I think that uh, I think that we can we can do something here to start with. Um, so I'm just gonna lay down. Um, I'm just gonna lay down some some background lines here, and uh, holding down Shift and Alt. Let's let's let the uh, the program catch up with me for a second because I'm using textured brushes, and so sometimes yeah. those uh, take a sec to. Uh, to get through, but I, I I find often that they're a little bit more on the on the cinematic side. This is how you work. Just how you use this in production when you're working. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it, it just depends on the production. Like every production's needs are going to be different. So like if you're say you're working on more of like a feature environment, they're going to want to see stuff like this, right? Where that's it's textured, it's highly, uh, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I think they feel like it's more artistic somehow, mm -hmm. um, and in in some ways it is, I guess. But um, I think that uh, we don't necessarily need uh, that all the time, especially for like TV and stuff. When it's a little yeah. bit, um, and and it does tend to make larger files. So I know a lot of TV people are like, never use textured brushes. Like I worked with a guy who only used textured brushes. And um, it sort of irked uh, the directors a bit <laughs> because they're like, "What the heck is this guy doing? Stop it! You're making everything your lag when you're opening it." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, let's I see, imagine let's... shipping things around when they're that heavy too uh, is annoying. You know, uploads and downloads take forever. More chance of failure. I think that uh, we should have this guy be in like incognito type gear right he's got like a fake mm -hmm. nose <laughs> and like you know a beard and and such he's got a hat on like kind of one of those like hollywood people trying to be incognito right totally you can see a little bit of his eye right here and maybe just like part of of this on his on his fake nose let's see Let's get some mustache going on here and a jacket. He's he's got big sacks of duffel bags and stuff under. He's probably running from the IRS. Trying to escape to the Cayman Islands before it's too late. Like uh, some straps for the duffel bags that are kind of underneath his arms. Maybe uh, he's got like a couple of of the, you know, straps like this, and they're around his body as he hustles away. You could hear like heavy breathing underneath uh, the the beard. See, this is kind of like you know tacked onto him like that. That's looking great. The hair color is different, and I think you know uh, we can do like a little a little trick here. Um, and I'm just going to duplicate this frame, and then one of the things that's uh, kind of a, a a nice little trick is just going to this background, and then I'm just going to flip it up, upside down. So that way, when I go back, it seems like it's you know nice. Good. So and then a, a, another little thing is uh, just tilting it forward and and moving them up. So now he looks like he's running. Excellent. And uh, let's not have him flashing orange so we can see that he's sort of running. And uh, one of the things we can do too is is taking these two frames. Um, I'm just going to zoom in on that so it's easier to see. I'm going to take these, these two frames here, and I'm going to copy them and then just duplicate them. So just copy and paste. Now I have duplicates, and now I can do uh, you know some foreground type stuff too. So I'm duplicated it a couple of times, and now I can have like you know uh, a, a, a tree branch or something 
kind of like right here. You can tell that he's like running past some stuff. So I can have like, you know, a, a, a big uh, tree or something right here in the foreground. Maybe it's got some knots in it or something. Something that we can use to, to add a little bit of interest. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that. And then I'm going to put that right up here uh, on a different layer. Cool. Then, well, uh, Savage Rage 52 says, hello, I would like to go into storyboard animation in the future. Do you have any tips at all for an amateur storyboard animator? Well, I would say that, um, first of all, you know, good drawing skills, clear drawing skills are, are really, really important. Um, and being a good communicator. Um, and if you're working on a uh, comedy, it really helps to be funny. So, um, you know, work on your comedic timing, work on uh, stuff that, you know, story artists, a lot of the time, we'll, we'll come up with stuff. We're, we're, we're constantly, you know, on, on the fly with a lot of things. So being good or learning how to think on your feet is, uh, is really, really important. Yeah, like anything more, uh, the more you do it, if you really want to do it, just do it all the time. Have your sketchbook in hand and you're sitting at Starbucks and you see a little interplay between people, board it real quick if it's interesting to you. Also watching things like this, watch all of Mike's streams with Toon Boom here because they're full of specifically, you know, using the tools we use in the profession and um, the thinking that goes on, which is the thing you really need to learn. Yeah. And you know now we have a, a catalog of over thirty episodes, which, you know, I'm 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 proud to say that you know, uh, we've been able to do this for quite some time, and it's it's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, but now you guys have the benefit of that back catalog of of stuff, and uh, you know, please take advantage of it and let us know what what you guys think because uh, you know we want to make sure that you're getting as much out of these streams as possible. Okay, so we got a little tree here. And if we wanted to get fancy with it, we could put a little bit of blur on it. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, this selected layer right here. And I'm going to turn the old one off. And then I'm going to go to layer. Um, let's see, convert to bitmap layer, which is going to change this from a vector drawing to a raster drawing. And uh, if the difference really is vector is all math and raster is pixels. So now what I can do is come over here and apply an effect and I'm going to do a directional blur and I'm going to make the angle 90 degrees. So it's nice and flat. Um, and then bi-directional we'll, we'll put uh, a number of iterations, maybe at three. Let's preview that and see how it looks. So it's going to do a little bit of rendering. And then we're going to see a result. Nope, that's the wrong way. So let's do it at 180, because obviously that's an incorrect angle. So let's preview that. This tree is not going up and down. It's going left and right. And bidirectional means it's going to blur from, from one side to, to the next. So number of iterations, three. It's too much. Let's preview that again at one. Because he's only running. He's not, you know, the flash. So, hmm, that's even... That's even more. So let's turn the length down to about 20 and preview that. There we go. Now we kind of know great. what that is. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know those sort of tools existed. That's excellent. Let's turn it down to 15 even. There we go. So now we can take this uh, particular bitmap layer. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to put it... Uh, and it's, it's, I have auto save on, which is another thing. Always save, save your work. So the auto save kind of, you know, got that on me. So I'm going to take this layer here. I'm going to copy the layer. I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to paste that layer. Just using the right click. And then I can just, you know, using the select tool, just grab this and, you know, do that with it. So we have boom, boom, and then we'll paste that one more time. Paste that layer. So you're copying, making new panels, and you're repositioning the tree. Yep. That's great. So now we have oh. him running. We can do this as a cycle of running, and he runs past a tree. And uh, then, uh, you know, let's do another shot here. 
of him. And we'll just get those markers back out again. I, I like having a little bit of marker texture on some of my brushes. I feel like it, it kind of gives it, for some reason, I feel like when I'm laying something down with like a big thick wash, it tends to really um, just be a little bit more free. I guess it, I know it is. a lot of a lot of storyboard artists work with markers and sharpies and stuff like that too. I think just kind of like it limits your ability to noodle, but it gives you a lot of freedom of expression. In the chat, you see Limex Live says hello. Thanks to Mike's advice last time to board a scene out of our childhoods, I gained a revisionist job for May. Hey! Congratulations. Good work. Right on, dude. That's the way to follow direction from people who know what they're talking about and get the results. That's that's always a good choice. That's and, really great. I love hearing stuff like that. Good, good for you, man. Yeah, excellent. That's what that's what uh, watching the collaboratory will do for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we have success stories now. Yay! Yeah, I bet there's more of them. One can only hope. Right? While. Yeah. So let's uh, let's let's make this a very uh, uh, tense wooden environment uh, where he seems like he's having to dodge through a bunch of stuff and you know go through a bunch of different things and I think we can really uh, make a fun scene where he's sort of running and dodging through this this woodland area. Um, again, this, uh, this is a really big texture brush, so it's 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 chugging a little bit, but uh, not so bad. So I'm going to go back up to another one of these nice textured brushes, only it's not as textured, I guess. I don't know. Um, and we'll put a, a big tree right here. And uh, we'll, we'll put like a big uh, root right here that's sort of in the in the path. You know, some some tree stuff, maybe uh, some some bushes over here and like a, a beaten path. Uh, this is another bush right here. some undergrowth and then a tree in the foreground and you could break this up you know you you could break this up into component parts and uh really make a, a meal out of it with um uh multiplane type stuff but for this for the purposes of this we just don't have that kind of time uh today because i think we're gonna have a lot of acting we're gonna go through with this particular setup it probably um, also depends on what, what phase of the work you're in, whether you're going to take that kind of time. If you're just thumbnailing something because your director said, hey, I'm kind of trying to figure out what this is going to look like, as opposed to, say, you have a design of the wood already that you're glancing at while you're doing your boarding, right? Right, right, right. You know, and, and in boards a lot of the time, uh, sometimes you have, like, a design department that's, uh, you know, kicking butt, and they're on top things, and they have, like, stuff for you to use already. Um and sometimes you don't. So yeah. um, usually you don't. <laughs> usually, yeah. Usually, usually you don't. So yeah. let's uh, let's put some some more, uh, you know, trees and maybe we'll even. Uh, I don't know. We've we've kind of gone um, with uh, oh, uh, what's that kind of tree called? It's not it's not a conifer, but it's a. Uh, I want to say deciduous, but I don't think that's right. Deciduous uh, is the ones that drop their leaves. Conifers yeah, yeah, are yeah. Evergreen, right? Evergreen. Yeah, conifers evergreen conifer type tree versus deciduous pine tree. tree. It's all the yeah, same. yeah. Live from five before says hi guys. Do you have a system or a process that you use to interpret a script before thumbnailing and doing panels, etc.? Do I have a system? Um, well, I, I think a lot of the time, you know, we'll just take a script and uh, you know read it through. Uh, and see whatever, you know, sticks out. And if there's, you know, particular things that, that stick out to you, then just draw little thumbnails like right on the script. I find that that's pretty helpful. And then after you kind of get everything uh, into a situation where you can kind of look at it better um, with clearer eyes, I guess you would say, um, then make your changes and iterate. And of course it always, it, it depends on if you're doing your own stuff or if you're working with a director. Because if you're working with a director, they're gonna have revisions and, and stuff for you. And uh, um, you just, that's what you have to abide by. So, 
you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of uh, collaboration that happens in, in shows. And um, I think that's really, really a great thing to, to think about. Like when you're, um, you know, approaching a, a board, sometimes you'll have a director that'll be like, have a very specific vision. Sometimes you won't. And then in, in some cases you'll have a little bit more freedom to do kind of what you feel is best. And then uh, other times you're just going to be, uh, you know, following a, a more stringent set of directions. Yeah. And when you're new, especially ask a lot of questions. I mean, it's, it's pretty much expected that you're going to be wondering when, especially, you know, being handed a script and going, what do I do with this? You know, if you, if yeah. you don't know, it's better to ask them to spend a lot of time drawing, which is what we tend to, if we're artists, we're like, I know how to draw. I'm going to go do that. But, if you're wondering what direction to take, ask somebody, even ask the other board artists, you know, ask Mike. Yeah. A good, a good story team will back you up, bro. You know, and, and, and that's, that's what you're looking for really with, you know, and, and I, I would say this even in your own uh, like circle of artists that you hang out with. And if you don't uh, have a circle of artists that you do, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, different discord channels you could probably uh hop into and uh sorry man i didn't have my my fill in on that's why it's not working right and i keep doing the same thing over and over again just in case you're wondering um i was my fill -in wondering <laughs> yeah so i mean i'm gonna stop noodling this background uh in just a sec after i finish doing this one you're probably wondering why i'm repeating the same move movements over and over and that's why because of human error and oversight it's a, it's what uh, some people refer to as an IT ten error, um, <laughs> uh, and and if you I, don't know what that ID, phrase is, I just learned it today, so I had to try it out. But yeah, okay. ID ten T. Next time, next time you'll get it right. ID ten T. ID ten T. Okay, ID ten T. All right, great. If you spell that out, you'll find out what it means. Um, okay, let's let's duplicate that, and um, then we're gonna then we're gonna put a character in there. And I think what we we can do is just I'm going to turn on my my light here, my um, which will just gray everything out for me. I'm going to come over to this uh, to this brush here, and have like uh, you know, homeboy coming through the woods here. Cool. He's got his he's got his his backpacks or his duffel bags. He's got his hat and his beard and his fake nose. And I'm going to turn off the uh, <clears throat> the fill in because I don't need it right now. And some of these are going to be derpy thumbnail drawings. So hopefully you guys don't mind that. But if you are you are um, been on the stream a while and you've seen us, uh, hopefully it's not bothering you still because you've probably seen a lot. You know, in terms of like how you start from a script and work your way into actually, you know, starting to get your ideas down for boarding. My ex-wife was a really talented uh, storyboard artist, Teresa Cullen. And she's worked on a bunch of features. She worked at DreamWorks on all their stuff for a long time. And um, one of the things that I would see her doing would be to read the script and kind of determine like, okay, here's the sequences. You know, if they give you a whole script or if they give you a big chunk of it, you're going to go like, well, this is all, you know, based on what the script says, this is all happening in this area. This is all happening in a different area, you know, and then just kind of determine whatever it is that's important to you about how you board, you know, the, the emotional idea that you're trying to support in that sequence. And that's probably going to influence, wouldn't you say, Mike, your choices about like how you stage things, who's in what position on screen, that kind of stuff yeah. based on, you know, where, first of all, just location based divisions and then like tone, you know, whether they're just doing exposition or whether it's action, you know, that's all, those are broad strokes, but there's even subtle divisions in there. Yeah. And you know, um, it's really good to, uh, you know, understand that there's sort of psychology behind shots um, that you can utilize in your boards. Like, you know, um, close ups are really good at showing a lot of facial emotion, right? So um, if you have a decision or something that needs to be made, then uh, you can show it in a close-up. Panic is really good to show in a close-up. You know what? We'll do that in a second. I'll show you 
how to how to do that. So this guy's running through. Um, and I'm just gonna get on my selection tool here. So I was still on my brush. We don't want that. We've got a new a new panel. And then let's have him kind of uh, you know jump off this uh, this thing here. He's got his his bags and he's got his stuff. These giant duffel bags full of full of wads of cash. Let's have him. Another good thing to cultivate is being able to see, uh, kind of like in animation, being able to flip around in your poses, and. Mm -hmm. uh, see where the positions are because you know as a as a storyboard director and episodic director it is very irksome uh when stuff isn't in its right position yeah well it, some people like there's different takes on that right like just showing just taking the same pose with the same legs and just paste it in there four times and you know just to show the path and let character if you have character layout i guess this is the difference i'm not used to working in that world where the boards are all of it so yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't just kind of dump a guide for someone else to come in and do layout over would you yep yeah um live from before uh from five before asked again he said besides gesture drawing is there anything we can do to improve our acting choices in boards to stop it looking stiff or stock like um, yes, I think subtle movement really helps. So like if you're, if you're, you know, got a character going on and, uh, they, um, uh, they're just talking, you know, just, and, and the, the temptation is to just have them be still and copy the pose and just have their mouth open and then, you know, gesture. Of course, this is, this is what you would refer to as a double palmy. Don't do that. Um, yeah. we have. Uh, a boss that uh, in the storyboard meetings used to hand out the Palmy Award, which was <laughs> kind of, you know, and, and you, you, you yeah. know, expect that from Anderson because he's, he's a funny cornball. Oh yeah. Um, but he the Palmy one of my Award, drawings to the wall one time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Palmy Award is not good. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's, it's this one. It's this one. It's like, I don't know. This is all the way that I ever act. Yeah, yeah don't, exactly. Don't do that. Don't ever don't do, do that. that. Not even once. They'd rather have you draw them picking their nose. Trust me. Okay. So he's going to go through. Um, what was the initial question? <laughs> I kind of lost oh, track. It was like, uh, is there, is there way, any way to improve your acting choices besides yeah. gesture drawing? Um, you know, some sometimes uh, just taking some sort of acting workshop or you know just learning about your craft that way studying actors um I any mean, kind of improv class is going to be huge for this sort of thing just yeah or also another one that i know a lot of people like to do is watching even though it's extreme but you get the point is watch sound you know movies before sound watch but yeah. keaton and other people like that who are known for doing that stuff right and just look at how they conveyed to the audience without the benefit of dialogue. Cause that's what you're really doing. You're doing all the stuff that, you know, it should reinforce what's being said. Yeah. By the it's, a, it's, a, it's a pantomime world and you're living in it. Mike, I you feel know, bad about giving you such a hard time about backgrounds because I feel like you spent a lot of time on that beautiful one to show me who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever, dude. I don't think so. It's I've, gorgeous. I've, I'm I've like, seen, I'm looking at it going, I'm jealous. If I could draw that, I'd be happy. Nah, I've seen the stuff you do, dude. Don't even, don't even, don't even try that. Don't front on me, bro. <laughs> I 
Now, the biggest question is, does he fall into a pit or does he get yoinked up in the air? <gasps> I kind of wanted him to get whacked in the head. What do you guys think? Listeners, we need some input. Yeah. So op option A, falls into a pit. Option B, uh, gets uh, hoisted up into a net. Option C, gets whacked in the head by an unruly uh, branch. I'm about to roll a dice for you. Okay. Let's see if the audience has anything. If they don't have anything, then we'll roll the die. Gets whacked in the head has a vote from Charlie Brown. Charlie's Brown. Okay. Charlie's Brown? Yeah, whacked in the head. C. Tron Volta says C, which was also whacked in the head, I believe. Whacked in the head. We got two for whacked in the head. That's enough for me, man. There's a trend. All right, whacked in, the head. Wha whacked in the head. <clears throat> IME says whacked in the head. That looks great, Mike. Dang. Yeah, this is practically layout. This is basically layout. This is what we do on the show is what Mike's showing you. This is kind of the extent that we would figure it out before it's sent to animation. Okay, so boom, and then we'd have, oops, wrong way. Probably have like a an exit leg, you know, so this would yeah. be the opposite. This would be uh, this leg here that you would see right at right at the end, maybe uh, a, a bit of a bit of duffel bag, you know. Nice. Because it's nice to be able to have your ins and outs uh, very clearly, you know. Yeah, I I could even do something where I can take. Uh, this initial pose, uh, duplicate that. And then like, you know, cause you see him coming up, maybe he even have something like this where it's just like a little something that comes into frame. Right. That's kind of, yeah. you know, going against this duffel bag line. So we'll probably put it right here instead. So coming up, boom, jumps over this, uh, you know, root, and then uh, let's uh, – so, but what whacks him in the head? Yeah, is it already there and he runs his head into it, or is it an unruly tween? Oh, and, and it's like an actual robbery? or Because uh, I'm kind of thinking it should be something that is like – I don't know, like you did it to yourself or – uh, you just didn't see something because you're in such a rush. Right. You know, it might be it might be one of those things where we do a, a POV. What if we did this? What if we did this? And we put uh, the hat on an overlay. So, like, this is a is a point of view shot. We'll put that on the very top layer. So the hat is sort of like. you know, covering a lot of the screen. Yeah. Right. And then we'll, uh, we'll turn on the draw behind, put in uh, a layer of masking over it. So we don't see anything behind this. Right. Cool. Once it clicks in. Is it going to click in? I don't know. Maybe it's not going to click in. Okay. I think you turned it off again. No, it's he on. could be he could be glancing over his shoulder for a moment to make sure no one's following him and run into something. That's also an opportunity. Yeah, that's also a, a good thing, a good way to do it. Um, we can do uh, like uh, you know, right here with the the background would be like a path that we would just keep zooming in on. Yeah. So like you know, we, we see like a zigzaggy uh, kind of path going through this area you know, trees and, and, and such. And it, it sort of winds around. 
And if you right. want to like get really fancy, you can animate like this whole thing. So like, or you can just um, take what you've got and uh, you know do this with it. So we've got it coming forward. Duplicate that, and then we'll make this bigger again and like shift it over as he's running along this area. So you're switching between panels and adjusting elements. I mean, bringing all the drawing elements with you and adjusting them to make new panels. Yes. So I'm not we have really it. familiar with this process. So. Running forward a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you could do this through layer motion, um, yeah. but we're, we're not going to do that just because it takes a little bit more time. So okay. then this, and then at this point, I would say probably a good idea is to actually like turn the environment a little bit. And I mean, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could um, do you know this little section and have a 3D background. But um, yeah, we're not going to do that right now. That's <laughs> next month. If you want to see how to integrate with 3D, that's next month. So in this case, we're going to just keep drawing this. And we're going to use this tree right here as a pivot point. So if I, I use a tree right here, and we'll see the path just sort of like open up into you know an area as everything around just sort of shifts to the side so we have you know and i'm um, got some things turned on now if if you want to avoid this kind of frustration uh in not knowing if something's turned on or off use the tool presets i'm not using the tool presets right now and i probably should um, just because i'm drawn in gray and all these tool presets are set for for uh using a uh, uh, black fill in color. Um, but uh, yeah, use your tool presets and you will be able to have uh, those brushes available to you at any time. Okay, great. So we can even do a little bit of a uh, shake on the uh, on the, the hat here and have it kind of go from left to right a little bit down. up into one side so it kind of you know we get that sort of like first person-y uh sort of thing like what you would see in like a heads up display in a video game where you know they have the the up and down movement yeah just run it through <clears throat> is this the sort of thing that you're like I, like are you more into the action side of it or does it just depend on the, the story I'm into every side of it as much as possible because uh, I I like doing a, a lot wide variety of different things. So yeah. action scenes are always fun. Um, comedy scenes are fun. Um, so I think we're gonna go. Let's go back to this. Actually, we're gonna go back to this. I'm gonna take a copy of that, and I'm gonna stick that right here. Tron Volta likes your idea. He says, yes, please, next month, integrate with 3D. I animate in 3D, and I'm trying to do more 2D. Cool. So you'll, 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 be, uh, you'll be all set for that one. I'm going to make a copy of that um, secondary panel, too. And OK, so it wants to paste into a new, into a new uh, scene number. But we'll just combine that in so it's one solid scene and we got the back and forth here oh i accidentally uh, copied the same panel twice so we're just going to undo a couple of things and uh i think it was this one yeah that's the one we need so select that copy it let's paste that bad boy on it's going to say rename scene no but i'm going to put okay and then we'll just shunt it into this there we go so now we have the cycle again. And then this time we are going to duplicate, copy, paste. And then in uh, the drawing of the guy itself, we're going to have him turn his head. So I'm just going to delete that. Another thing you can do is just turn it a different color. You know, that's a nice little trick. If you don't want to use like onion skin, necessarily um because 
you don't need to, I guess, then uh, we'll just have him, you know, turn his head. Yeah, we do this a lot in background, in background, uh, in Toon Boom, drawing over the top of a different color and then just eliminating it later. Kind of looks a little bit like Dr. Teeth from Muppets with that big nose. It's not a bad look. All I need to, I just need the hat. Right? You just need the big, uh, big top hat from right. Dr. Teeth. Totally have one somewhere. <laughs> not within reach, though. Oh, uh, it's okay. That's not an everyday thing that you would use. Well, maybe you do water. No. Yeah. If I'm going to the steampunk bar or Burning Man, I'll bring that. Yeah. Did you, you know, when you started working as a storyboard artist, was it, what sort of expectations did you have that they're not to be like how it was or, or was it gradual enough that you didn't have that? Or, you know, did something surprise you? Did something disappoint you? You know what surprised me the most, actually, is, um, and I think this is a really important lesson for, for just artists that want to work in production, is that you had to learn how to draw things that you weren't comfortable with. Like, say, like, there's, uh, you know, a car chase scene, and you're like, I suck at drawing cars, like I do. I suck at drawing cars. Um, me too. And uh, some people are really great at it, but I am not one of those people. And so um, kind of like, oh, well, I have to do this. It's part of what I need to do to get my job done. Holy crap. I better learn how to draw cars, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, I think that that was one of the yeah. biggest surprises, uh, out of everything was just like, Oh, I have to draw stuff that I'm not necessarily super comfortable with. Yeah. You can get assigned anything, anything. And, and it's weird too in production of stuff that'll fall to you. Like things that don't get designed will, end up in your lap and you'll have to like basically come up with how it's going to look. Yep. And sure that's happened to you. Oh, many a time, you know, Oh, we don't have a design for this guy yet. So uh, just uh, do something for a placeholder and we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, like that kind of thing. Like, you know, yeah. and, and design departments get backed up like every other department ever. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, Sometimes that's just what's needed at the time. And uh, if, if you're good at, like, for instance, I just improv this design, you know, and uh, that's fine. It looks great. Because it, it's good to develop that sort of skill where you can just do stuff in shorthand right on the fly. And then, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting pretty being able to just have that un that one more skill that makes you that much more valuable of an artist to have around. And then uh, I think uh, we can do on that C layer, let's just have a, um, a low branch. Sticking out. Yeah, that looks great. Just I'll put a little uh, something up here to turn these off again. Maybe even uh, up the size of that brush and give it a little bit of extra something. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to turn on those things again that I've been turning on and off this whole stream. And uh, let's just give that a little bit of a, a tone on it, just so it reads well. There we go. Okay, now um, I'm gonna duplicate this. Copy selected layer, paste layer, turn this one off. And we are going to uh, convert to bitmap layer. You can do that just in this uh, menu here. Let's do that. Artwork may be cropped. Yep, I know. Because there's only so many pixels it can have, right? So it has it basically makes a field of pixels that you're able to use. That's what this little border is right here. Because you can kind of see it 
uh, this little uh, purple dotted line. I don't know if that's really apparent, but open up your trial of Storyboard Pro because uh, we go. know you all either have the program or you're downloading <laughs> it currently. And uh, then uh, you can see what I mean. So layer, apply effect. We're going to go back with that directional blur. We've already set the settings, so we don't need to even preview it. We'll just do it. And then um, so we have this now. And let's just grab this, and we'll pull it here right as he turns. We're going to take a copy of this, copy selected layer. We're going to put it. Uh, we're going to paste it here. Put it back where it goes. That's going to go right there. And then uh, let's duplicate this. Boom. Okay. And I'm going to go back to uh, this layer here where we have the original vector still intact. And I'm just going to copy that vector, turn this layer back off, and then I don't need this anymore. So I can, uh, we have, this is the copy of that one layer. So I can just delete that layer, and then I'm going to paste this here because that's kind of where it stops, right? Yeah. Uh, boom, and he sees it just in time for pow. Oops. Just delete that guy. Does Storyboard Pro use the, you know, underlay, overlay, color, and line layer thing? Um, like Harmony does? or I've been pushing for that for a while. <laughs> so yeah. if any yeah. of the developers are listening, we want that so much. <laughs> It looks like it does the way you're using it. So I'm just wondering how you're getting your line work not to interfere with your tones. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, because this the vectors are all organized in layers as it stands, right? Right, yeah. So um, you can just draw behind. So it's not that there's necessarily layers and sub-layers, although that feature would be great, developers. Mm -hmm. Look at you. I don't wanna I don't wanna call out uh, Mark Andre uh, personally. Better not. But, but uh, he's super he's so cool though. Gosh, yeah. that guy's cool. Um, they've done a lot for us on the Simpsons. I mean, our version of Toon Boom is pretty custom, I think, and it, a lot of it has been their work. But I think these things trickle into the main one eventually. So let's see, this guy is going to get wrecked by this tree branch. Now, as you're working like this, like if you're working, you know, like a typical day at the studio, right? And you're boarding like this. Is that just how it works? You're just dropped on an idea and you work your way through it. And then you present it or what? what's your process there? Um, it, you know, I think a, it on a TV show, because I kind of know how feature works, but what's a TV show like? It just depends on the show. Um, sometimes you are just sort of dropped off without any sort of real uh, direction other than this is the script, follow what's here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, or if you're on an outline show, a lot of the time you're sort of writing that too. Wow. So boom, boom, bam. Nice. And then uh, let's see how how are we doing on time? We got I think we got about another twenty five minutes, right? Yeah, I was thinking if those bags just flew off of him, and as he's falling unconscious, they land at the feet of those tweens, then you'd be getting oh. right into it. And and here I was going to have them find him a day later, but uh, that's, that's you do cool. you do you, Mike. <laughs> Boom. Um. Let's have him even, you know, kind of like. Okay. 
And let's get that fake beard kind of falling off too. Hat and go off screen. Move. That just looks like it hurts, man. So what happens when you're in a rush, right? Make mistakes are made. Mm-hmm. Dice are rolled. My uh the grandmaster of the Kung Fu style that I studied for a while, he he would say roll your dice and he meant knock your teeth out. No. So, bam! Oh. You can tell he bit his tongue. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ouch. Boom. Um, and then we'll just uh, copy this one more time. Sometimes it's good to just give that one extra pose for uh, any sort of editor that comes your way. You know, uh, we have uh, an episode with my good friend Charles um and he talks about the editing process too if you're curious what i'm talking about just go to a previous episode of collaborator with uh, charles jones nice so boosh we can do that and maybe just give him like a little bit down here turn him up a little bit so um okay so bam Then I think it'll be kind of uh, kind of fun to uh, do something like um, just watching him crumble into the scene, like from uh, from above. You know, like a not a Wes Anderson shot, but like one of those like directly above camera type situations. Mm-hmm. Like this, just laying laying down a grid sometimes helps. There's these uh, extra ones that I did that are kind of radiating out, not really helping so much. So let's just get rid of those. Um, and just have him, you know, roll into this all all crumpled up and and busted. To have some some little rocks or you know twigs some something sticking up some more uh you know roots or whatever so we we know he's still in the forest you know some some leaf piles or you know something more rocks what and, do you like uh, the most is it is it make you do you in the story where storyboarding process is it like the ideas or the drawings or what, what's your what's your you know enjoyment factor come from because clearly you you're digging it the storytelling aspect a lot i think really? the storytelling aspect and you know the the drawings to me are now like more of a means to an end okay. um and, and though you know i i do still take you know enjoyment in the drawing of it um i think that now more than anything uh you you want to get to this to the place as a board artist where you can draw so well that it becomes more of a natural extension you know in in, yeah. in a long way and we're all trying to get there i'm not totally there yet cuz i still struggle with drawing right. from time to time like everybody does and you will you'll struggle still you know in in places but um i think that's kind of the goal is to get to where the drawings matter less than what the drawings say you know what i mean yeah like the physical act of drawing the drawings is secondary to the emotion and the feeling of said drawings right so let's have him because he we saw him dip out boom like this and i think it would be good to have him kind of roll into this into this scene here um And just have him be like, you know, a 
you know, we were talking about this before about, <laughs> and I always try to use this example because it's like, sometimes you see something in the script and you're thinking, oh man, I got to draw that. And, uh, you know, we see things in the Simpson scripts, like, you know, everybody in the football stadium stands up and throws ping pong balls at Homer. Right. Right. right, it'll, right, be, right yeah. it'll, it'll be like one sentence like that. And then we're all just like, just putting our heads on the table in the meeting about the scene, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. And then I think about you guys. Cause like I can hand off the ping pong balls to CG and then that's their problem. Right. And right, uh, right. I just, I just got to draw all those chairs, but you, you got to like do something in boards that gives the impression that that's happening so that that can go through the animatic process or whatever your process is where someone sees it and can say, cool, that's how I want the shot to be. Right. Right. What's, do you remember anything that you worked on that was nuts like that? Oh, a, a, a soccer stadium. It was a soccer stadium full of fans, and we had to populate the entire thing. In boards. In boards. Oh, my God. I think – no, I think it was even – I think that was a character layout scene that I had because, you know, like when I started on The Simpsons, it was – I was in character layout. Yeah. You you were there, and then you moved over to boards for a while? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's where I ended up was in boards before uh, mm -hmm. I ended up leaving to go to – uh, Disney television, you know, for, for a show called future worm that hardly anybody's ever heard of, which I was really surprised because it was a funny show. And, uh, we did a lot of, uh, really fun work on that one. So I was surprised when it didn't hit as well as we were hoping it would. That's interesting. You know, I worked on Hey Arnold for a long time and I, I, uh, like four years or something. And I never really thought about it. I was just like, hey, it's the show of Nick that I'm working on, you know, and I, I didn't realize how connected a lot of people were to it. And of all the things I work on, you know, maybe a close, a close second to the Simpsons. If I mentioned that show, people react the biggest, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll react big because it's the Simpsons. Right. But they, they'll react like, Oh, you know, Hey Arnold, like it was important to them, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I, I think I think as artists, sometimes we sort of discount what we're doing matters to people. Or the you know? scope of it, you know, like the scope of like even that show, like you say, Future Worm, pff, and you act like no one's ever seen it, but it'll be on cable. Hundreds of thousands of people will watch that. You yeah. Know? So the attention and time you, you took to make it good is is there for them when they do you know yeah so uh you know and one of the things that was kind of cool is when i was working on ducktales um you'd go to um you know we we did san diego comic-con a couple of times we had panels at san diego comic-con and like you know one of them uh david Tennant actually came to who was voicing scrooge and uh that looks angry you want hurt in uh you know mm -hmm. so one of the things you can do is just whip it around <laughs> you don't know nice. like, yeah. turn it is it what is it command command option or command shift it is control and alt or command and option or mac yeah. and if you want to reset it just push shift m and you're back to your normal spot yeah, Shift X will just rotate it without moving it back to central. Yeah. So I mean, it it uh, it mimics a uh, traditional animation wheel, uh, or uh, you know, the uh, the disc, the animation I would, disc. I would love to get one of those traditional discs, but with an undo button. Yeah. Right. That would that's, be that's really, really, really handy. That's you hear that too, and, developers? <laughs> yeah, right. Undo button for paper. Um, Anwa asked, uh, Anwa Man asked, I mean, sorry, Aaron Man, mixing names up here. Does Mike like to draw oh. a vector layer or rasterize layer? I, I wonder if it's the same Aaron Man. I might know that guy. He's a cool dude. Yeah? Just, yeah. yeah, he's a cool guy. He's thumbs it up, so I think he I think he is the guy that you that you know. 
Reach and out to me online, Aaron. Reach cool. out to me online, dude. Let's keep in touch. Okay, so let's have like he, you know, he rolls in his face, boom, 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 and then okay. there's a little, you know, twist pull out here. I think we might be better served with that going in the opposite direction. Now, let's play that and see how that looks. Uh, yeah, that's better. Nice. That feels nice. And then what we can do? Let's uh, let's take this and, and duplicate it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these keyframes here. Um, so we Mike, have do you have a this. do you have a set direction for? I mean, a set duration for each panel. How do you how do you gauge that, or do you? Um, this is at the default. So in in the in the preferences, you can do a default. Um, okay. And uh, you know that's something that you can just set up to where it's comfortable. You know, sometimes it's nice. like a second, sometimes it's like five seconds or whatever, but you can set it yeah. to like eight frames if you want, you know, which oh, I think wow. is, I think it's kind of what I do. I know mine, mine set at, at, at 24 frames right now. So a second per panel. Um, okay. But like, you know, you can set it to any number that you want as a default length. Can you change it per panel as you're working through and just like do a long, slow truck in on a single drawing or something? uh yeah yeah absolutely you can you, you can do an entire animatic in the program and not leave it that's amazing so i mean it's, re it's really great you know i would love to yeah. see more uh i would love to see a position in animation that is animatic editor that uses storyboard pro like like it is supposed to be used right you know okay yeah. so let's let's do this we got this going on, and then uh, what we will do is a flash zoom. So let's uh, let's get this going on here, and I'm going to take the background, and I'm going to take this, or I'm going to take these these layers here. And what we're going to do is just shrink them straight on down, like that. And then um, you know, and this is one way to do it. There's just several different ways to do it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to get out uh, a, a big brush and um, I'm going to turn on my uh, perspective guides. And I'm just going to take one a one point perspective and put it right here. Right. And then just start drawing lines out from it. Let that catch up for a second. I use this tool all the time and it is really handy. So, uh, yeah, that way we can, um, you know, have some, some variety here and I'm going to turn up the size of this brush. Sorry if it chugs, it just might, but, you know, bitmap brushes in, in every bitmap program ever. It's a thing. So, so let's just, have another round of this. Anwa is like me, and I've only ever heard of Future Worm from you. But you're you're a, a credible source, so you might see me watching that. You should. You should watch it. It's fun. I will. I will. I was that really was hoping idea. that it would kind of become like one of those like cult classic type things, like after the yeah. fact. Like, oh my gosh, where did this go? And why wasn't there more seasons of it? And you know that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but every everybody has moved on in a big way. So uh, I don't know if a season two would ever happen, but it would have to be that sort of, oh my gosh, this show is hilarious kind of thing happen first. All right, so we've got to kind of have a little bit of a, um, a flash zoom out here. And I'm, oh, it's still thinking, I think. Come on, we only got 10 minutes. Go! Oh. So we're not even going to get into the dynamics of the kids finding him, really. Hmm. You might have time to do facial expressions if you hustle. Yeah, I think we might have to just break it down into super thumbnail territory. 
right? Okay, so we're gonna flash zoom out, and since we don't have any more time to to deal with that, it's going to be into a um, like a large canyon, I think. And I'm thinking like some sort of like Elysian Park type deal. Whoops. Um, if any of you from LA have been to Elysian Park, you know what I'm talking about. Sort of like that, um, you know, Pasadena Hills type uh, canyon area. So we'll 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 give the impression that he's fallen down into an area that um, maybe is going to be difficult to find him. So the woods down here. Maybe this is like sort of like a high Sierras type uh, situation. I don't know deciduous forest, probably not, but uh, you know we've just been drawing deciduous trees. So let's make this more of like a local Angeles National Forest type deal. Which and you, nice. this this is the the kind of thing that you could really make into a. Uh, um, a multiplane shot should you choose to do so. Um, and some foreground elements there, some more trees, yada, yada, yada. And then let's get our camera going on. And uh, we will kind of start in, whoops, wrong one. Let's start this one like down here. And this one right right here. So we'll see that he's like, you know, super lost and done for if if no one comes for him. So uh whoosh. And this is one of those instances where you can do um in your camera movement. Um you can oh here it is. The ease in and ease out. So I would say this one would probably be like a you know a 16 frame ease out. Um, even even more like that. So I'd probably put it at uh, a, a second and 16 frames, and then we'll put it at a whole second worth of um, uh, easing out. So we get that nice, smooth whoosh, you know? Let's take a look at your animatic, Mike. We're down, we're down to the last few minutes here, so. Okay. Maybe we should see what we've got. And then uh, we just need to do the kids like poking at him with a stick. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, there he is. With his bags of cash. Do we help this guy? Do we rob him? One of the two. There's one of them going, Oh, that's not good. And there's one of them going, uh, I don't know. We should be here. Uh, and then there's uh, the wild one that's just sitting up in a tree right here, and he's like, "Let's rob him." <laughs> Take the. They got to be filled with money. Let's yeah, we them. we got to find out what's in these duffel bags that this guy is carrying, you know, and he's in like a ravine. So no one runs through the woods with their with their laundry. And he's all he's all like beat up and messed up, and he's got cuts and. Let's no. Let's not do compound fractures or anything like that. We don't need that. But no. Um, yeah. So that's that's our 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 stage here that we've got for uh, continued continued purposes. All right, there we go. All right, let's go into the front. Here we go. Let's pitch some boards. I'm gonna turn this off so we don't get jarred, and we're gonna go to camera view just for funsies. All right, so we've got this guy. He's running through the forest. Boom, 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 running fast. Trees whizzing past. He jumps through, uh, or he runs through this wooded area, jumping and bounding along the way, carrying these large duffel bags. We see him first, first person point of view. He's running through the forest. Boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden, he looks over his shoulder to see if anybody's following him, and just in time to whack. Ooh, and he takes oh. a circle, and then ba -ba -ba -ba, he uh, 
crumples and rolls into the scene. And then we we slowly turn as we see him prone and unable to help himself and then whoosh out to a huge canyon. Where will he ever be found? The answer is yes. He gets found by kids and they try and figure out what to do with him. Another I love it. Cinema. Cinema. It's beautiful. Thank so, you, Mike. You did a great job on that. Thanks, man. Of course, so you know, these are, again, you know, and I've said it before in, in other uh, situations, you know, these are rough drawings. This is, this is where boards start often not where they end um and uh revisions and stuff you know boarding is reboarding as they say so you know if this was a professional board it'd probably have a series of notes that would go through and you know that's not something to be afraid of i have a few notes i'll send them to you okay thank you i appreciate um, that so uh thank you mike um for joining us once again on collaboratory do you have any projects hey, hey. or topics that you would like to draw our attention to today? Um. Oh goodness, I didn't even think about that. Um. You know, I just want I just want to uh, give a shout out to my uh, to my friends at, at Wacom. Uh, they're going through a little bit of a, a, a social media uh, thing right now, but uh, uh, yeah, they're good people. So give them a shot. I, I, I know I know them personally, and uh, I've had nothing but wonderful interactions. So think about okay. it before before you condemn people online for you know tiddly mistakes. Thank you to everyone who joined us for collaboratory. Uh, Mike Morris could draw this in an hour. Think about what you could draw in three weeks. You can download a 21 day trial from Storyboard Pro at the website tuneboom.com and find free video tutorials at learn.toomboom.com. And if you're looking for more interviews, be sure to visit blog.toomboom.com for articles about storyboarding, animation, and 2D games. Until next time, Mike Morris will be here waiting for you. <laughs> we'll see you later. And you know, if, again, we have a catalog now of over 30 episodes. So if you wanna go back and see stuff that we've done previously um, and learn even more about the craft of storyboarding, check out our library. They're all really good. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.